on guys, Pat in the shop, and tonight we're talking the Dingle Balls. If you're unfamiliar with the Dingle Ball build, we have the Dingle Ball 1.0, which is a 480 horsepower, used parts, budget build, flat tapping cam, Vortec headed 355. Uh, when I did this engine and I dyno tested it, I went through the comments and I noticed a few things that guys didn't like, and that's what made me decide to build the Dingle Ball 2.0. The first thing that guys didn't like was the compression. Our compression ratio on this one is about 11 to 1, which a lot of guys don't like for pump gas. Uh, and the second thing which you guys really don't like uh, is the flat tappet camshaft. We're running a hydraulic flat tappet camshaft in here. It's a Summit Grind 4.7 swap. It turned out to be a fantastic camshaft, but a lot of guys do not like to run flat tappet cams uh, because of the fear of having a flat lobe or a, a lifter fail, which I totally understand nowadays. You really got to check your stuff, and even then, it's still a little scary when you're breaking a new engine. So I took that information and decided to build the 2.0, which has 10 to one compression. So I dropped it down to a more realistic pump gas number at 10 to one. Uh, and I decided to put a hydraulic roller cam set up in it. So it is a retrofit. The downside being to that is uh, it's expensive. It really, every other than that, it has upsides uh, for power, uh, for longevity. Uh, the real big downfall to going to a retrofit like this is obviously the cost of the lifters in the camshaft. But I wanted to build it uh, and I thought, you know what, this would be uh, a perfect comparison between the two and to see if we can make up for the, the compression, the lack of compression, and a few other things, make it up with the big hydraulic roller cam. And let me tell you, we did. So we're gonna be showing some comparison graphs of our Dingle Ball 1.0, our Dingle Ball 2.0, and I'm also gonna show you a comparison of the, of the last engine I posted a video about, which was that aluminum headed 355 uh, in the power comparison. Uh, let me give you a quick breakdown of what this is, and then we'll get into some power numbers. We'll start from the bottom. Uh, we put a better pan on this one versus the Dingle Ball 1.0, uh, and I'm gonna be go making another video with more of the part numbers and answering some questions. So if you have any questions, post below. But uh, the pan is a, a little bit better with a windage tray and a crank scraper. Uh, the crankshaft is, a, is a, an Eagle cast crankshaft. The rotating assembly's been balanced. It's got uh, GM rods, forged rods with ARP bolts. It's got Summit hum, uh, Hypertechnic flat top pistons. Uh, we got Vortec heads. We're only running the 194 valve. I ported them with the 194, but I added the 16 exhaust valves. If you follow my Vortec videos, you know I'm a big fan of putting the bigger exhaust valves in this, and then I street ported them. Um, they've been upgraded with uh, screw and rocker studs, guide plates, uh, because we did run high lift on this. These, these uh, heads are set up to run 600 lift. On this setup, we're running about 580 lift. Uh, it's got aluminum uh, 1.6 roller rockers. We're running a single plane intake, and we're running that custom grind camshaft from Howard's. I'll post the specs up for that. We'll get into some more details about that on the next video, but real quick, I'll just give you some of the specs. And then we just ran it with HEI, like we did with the Dingle Ball, and a Holly 750 carburetor. We tried a few different spacers and stuff like that, but basically the same stuff we tried on the Dingle Ball 1.0. Let's get into a dyno poll. Let's get into the dyno results. Let's check it out. The results, um, with equipped with our 750 Holly carburetor, our Super Sucker 2 inch combo, which is uh, so far my favorite spacer, uh, 37 degrees of total timing. Uh, this thing made uh, a peak uh, horsepower number of 478 horsepower, uh, 478.86 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, and it carried that uh, 478. Uh, for quite a few hundred RPM. Mm -hmm. It made peak torque of 450 at 5200, uh, which is really good torque on this thing for a 355. Uh, it didn't bull, uh, fall below 400 foot pounds of torque throughout the whole pull. Uh, this is a nice little combination for what it is. Uh, and this would be a killer 
combo for a street strip engine, if you ask me. Uh, th if you're wondering, it idles with about nine inches of vacuum. So a little more than the Dingle Ball 1.0 because it has a little less overlap, but we're not quite in what most would call the power brake friendly territory, if you're wondering, which I consider about 12 inches of uh, vacuum. Uh, some guys say 10, I say 12 is about the limit for most systems. So we're still under that power brake friendly uh, system without the use of hydro boost or a vacuum pump or something like that. Um, but that's the thing to make decent power with a, with a smaller engine like this. You're usually not within that um, uh, power brake friendly area, unfortunately. Um, but that being said, if you were to make this combination a 383, you'd probably start getting close to that, uh, you know, that power brake friendly um, uh, area and actually uh, pick up power. So I might have to come back to this and re um, rebuild this combination, use the same cam and heads in a 383 and actually had a 383 Vortec in the work. So just keep that in mind. Um, let's pull up the results from the Dingle Ball 2.0 and compare them to the Dingle Ball 1.0. You guys can just see the difference. All right, so take a look at this graph here. I've got the Dingle Ball 1.0 and the Dingle Ball 2.0 overlaid. Uh, the Dingle Ball 2.0 being in gray and yellow and the Dingle Ball 1 being in orange and blue. As you can see, the Dingle Ball 2.0 uh, actually made more power most of the curve, which it, it, this is what I was shooting for, but I didn't know just how close it was going to be. Um, you got to remember that the 2.0 has a point less compression. Uh, it has less duration. And it actually has less head flow. The, the heads for the 1.0 are ported a bit more because we have a 202 valve in there. But that often means that we lose velocity in the head. So what I was hoping for is we could actually uh, run a higher lift, uh, less duration roller cam and end up with similar results. And that's what we ended up getting here. As you can see, other than right at the top where we get a little bit more RPM out of the Dingle Ball uh, 1.0, that's just with the, the duration on the cam and the compression is uh, adding up there with just a few more horsepower. But other than that, the Dingle Ball 2.0 is making more power just about everywhere else. Um, this was honestly better results than I was hoping for. Uh, everything else is the same where we've got the same intake. Um, we've tr we tried the same carburetors. We tried everything. And this was kind of the closest comparison. But Overall, the Dingle Ball 2.0 with the roller cam is definitely uh, a better combination uh, and uh, it idles a little nicer, a little more um, uh, vacuum at idle and uh, it put out excellent torque for what it is. So here's a really neat comparison between the Dingle Ball 2.0 versus the aluminum headed 355 with a 231 single pattern cam from Howard's. Um, what I thought was really interesting about this test is how similar the engines were up until about 4,400 RPM and then the Dingle Ball 2.0 just took off. We could actually hear this on the dyno when we were running it. You could hear just come on the cam and just rev right out. It was really, really nice sounding engine on the dyno. Um, just super clean. But again, the aluminum headed engine here has more compression about uh it's 10.3 to 1 versus the 10 to 1 on the dingle ball so similar but again a little bit more um the aluminum head technically has more head flow than the um dingle ball it has the the bigger 202 valve and we're actually running a dual plane intake uh, like an air gap style intake on this aluminum head headed engine but what's is neat about it versus our single plane on the dual the dingle ball is if you look at the torque in the in the power output, as you would think with a with a dual plane would be better at lower RPM. It's actually almost identical until 4400, and then there's just no comparison after that. Uh, it's not a fair comparison because the the 231 cam is only uh, like 512 lift or something like that. I can't I have to check. I think it's 512 lift versus 580 lift. But I guess that's my point uh, where, where I'm going with this is don't be scared of, of lifting the valve because the only way to get air into the cylinder is to open that valve up. Uh, you're oftentimes better with a little less duration and a little more lift. And that's the big benefit of roller cams is you can get, you can do that. You can only get so much lift um, 
per duration with a flat tappet cam or the, the profiles become too aggressive and they just won't live. Um, but with a, with a roller cam, you can get away with that. And, and this kind of shows the real benefit of getting that valve open uh, and um, letting the, letting the engine breathe because uh, this, this dingle ball for what it is and only 10 to one, uh, it did quite well on the dyno in my opinion. So there you go guys, uh, the Dingle Ball 1.0 versus 2.0. Are you happy with the results of the 2.0? For a 10 to one compression 355, I think the thing did really well at 450 foot pounds, pretty decent for what it is. Uh, and we're creeping up on 480 horsepower. It's a decent little combination. Uh, we could run it on pump gas. Uh, and uh, again, let's, in the future, let's build a 3D3 version of this. I think it'd be really fun. So that's something I'm gonna be uh, working on. Um, if you have any comments or questions, comment below, because uh, I'm going to be making a parts breakdown video of this. So if you have any questions about certain parts, uh, make sure you let me know. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you have not subscribed to my channel. And don't forget that like button, guys. I appreciate uh, all the love and support. Uh, that's why we do this, and that's why we're having some fun. So uh, again, if you have any questions, comment below. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.